my name is Luke McBain, and I'm here with Ben Hennessy Garside, and we're just reflecting on on the time we had on the liminal farm. Last in the last session, we um, talked a little bit about metaphorical thinking, and um, I thought you did a great summary in saying that people think what we're doing is translating metaphors back and forth, and that's not what happened at all. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's difficult to explain what actually happened, except that we spent quite some time in a metaphorical world and found this really helpful and beneficial to to our lives in some way. We talked about that also last time. I don't know if I left out something in terms of metaphorical thinking or if we really need to, to summarize that again or make that better understood. And maybe the person interested in that should just watch the first session. Um, do, do you think that's a fair summary in two, sen in two sentences? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit tough to. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a tough, tough job. I mean, I suppose it was a kind of co-created imaginary world, wasn't mm -hmm. it? There was this thing about the imagination, um, uh, with a whole heap of other stuff. And so, yeah, they anybody watching should probably really go back and listen to the other the other thing. Um, not that. Like I'm sure we probably missed stuff out of the last video as well, because it there's a, there are a lot of little little pieces to mm. the whole thing. So um, um, no doubt we'll point to a few more of them um, as we go through this. There, but, there's, um, there's something about imagination which seems to get a bad um, rep um, in terms mm. of that. Oh, this is just imaginary. I'm just imagining things. Oh, this is just, it's not real. It's uh, so, and you're right. It is an imaginary world, but I, it's sort of like it deserves some qualification in terms of it, it seemed more like a world which was, which we were observing rather than imagining in a sense that, okay, now I'm going to imagine myself as the, the king of England or something like that. There, there, was, a, <laughs> there was a different, it was more like we were observing the metaphorical qualities of our, let's say, lower consciousness in regards to certain questions, and that built a common world, which yeah. you could yeah. argue was imagined, but which was yeah, very real I, I, at I the really, same time. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I welcome, yeah, I really do. I welcome that little just picking up on that world imagination because it doesn't quite. There's, there's something that's assumed that, that that can be assumed when people use that word that it's maybe childish or that it's uh, like just for fun. Um, although we did have fun, I don't think it was just for fun. Um, there's yeah, there's that that word serious serious play, mm. right? So to the extent it, it was imaginative play, there was a seriousness about it um and it was still playful um and yeah and the other thing that you that you just said then which is probably worth a, a little double double click on is the it, it's the noticing and seeing rather than the premeditated right let's make let's imagine a castle and then we all have to kind of imagine the castle it there's 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 something about kind of holding space to allow to allow things to come up so it's almost like almost there's a sense of surprise when the thing emerges right it, it doesn't feel premeditated that's my experience anyway, you know. Um, I don't show up going, right, well, today in this imag imaginary, you know, quote unquote, imaginary world, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to walk about like this, or I'm going to wear these clothes, or I'm going to stand in this way, or it isn't known beforehand what will be. And holding the door open to that, uh, yeah, keeping the door open for things to come in, 
to one's, you know, so, so an image might emerge or a feeling and it's, yeah, rather than premeditative, perhaps a way of describing it is post meditative or post, you know, rather than premeditated, you might say post meditated, right? Like it's like it emerges and then you say, and that then might trigger something in the other people, right? So like they'll then feel a thing or see a thing or, or the two images might interact in some way or, um, yeah. There's this, there's, because you mentioned this element of surprise, I think in a certain way, I was always looking out for that element of surprise. I was particularly delighted when something completely unexpected happened. Mm. I thought then, I mean, I think most sessions were uh, fruitful and uh, enriching, but those which were particularly delighting were those where I felt myself surprised like i totally unexpected of what was going on and i sensed that then i also at the same time had some deeper insight into a situation so what you're trying to describe and i think we had some back and forth on that is yes on one hand it's very playful and very enjoyable and at the same time it's very relevant so you so you have some sort of tension between those two let's say, call them extremes, like on one hand, being open and playful at the end, holding some serious attentiveness, attentiveness to what is actually happening in that moment, like not, not just letting it rip. And um, although you could do that, is also something which I felt led to those moments of utter surprise and delight also in that moment that you go like, you, you, could, you just wouldn't believe that this was right now happening as an insight into yourself and into the situation and, and into maybe into life and how you relate to people and that maybe also in the hope that the way you live and who you are can have an entirely different expression, um, which also relates to art, but since we were not consciously doing art, artistic artifacts, it, it, for me, it was obvious it related to ourselves more as people, as humans, than to the generation of something entirely new or novel or creative or an artifact. So, yeah. Um, and this insight, because it was not purposefully generated with intent, although constantly <laughs> desired in some way, was, I think, because of that, much even more valuable because there was not it wasn't like, okay, we are now this self, self-searching self group. We're now here in this group therapy session and what we're, we're not, that wasn't the intent from the beginning to say, okay, we're here to, as a support group to help each other through a rough time or to uncover parts of our personality. It just happened en passant. And I think that was even then, for, at least for me personally, much, even much more valuable than let's say in, the, in, the, in a classical therapy situation where that, the focus seems to be on that to rid you of a certain neurosis or understanding of reality. It sort of just happened. It just like emerged by itself. And it was, that's why it was so delightful. It was, you know, utterly joyful in that moment. Um, yeah. 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 Yes. Cause what can often happen in a therapy session, obviously uh, like lots of other forms of, you know, all sorts of other types of session, you know, it's kind of even even if you have a group of, um, I don't know, um, World War II um, aircraft, like fanatics who meet weekly to discuss World War II aircraft, it's like they turn up and they know, oh, what we're going to be doing is discussing World War II aircraft, you know, so, but but showing up with a kind of, with an openness at the beginning, was was really important and i just want to just tap into a couple of other things you said because you you talked about bearing fruit right and i suppose that's one of the things about fruit is that you you take it from a tree right something else grows the thing and you partake in it you don't create the fruit um there's a sense of it 
I'm saying you don't create the fruit. I mean, in one sense, we were creating it because uh, it was it was coming out of us somehow, right? Mm. Um, but that thing about it coming out of rather than being directed seems to be a really important mm. part of what was going on. The other thing you said was insight, right? And that's the thing about sight as well. Like you're, you're just watching for, mm. looking for, not reshaping the world so it looks the way you want it to, but, but you're seeing what's there. Um, I think at the bottom of that is a kind of trust that it's, it's like it's okay, right? You know, if you, if you just engage with the process of meeting some people and, um, and doing whatever it is that we did, right? If you just engage with that, you're going to get these moments of, of, of joy, of a realization, of surprise, of, and so there's a there's like a, there's a trust in that rather than a striving to make the thing a thing. Mm. Um, in terms of linking that back to the art, there's there's something about maybe sculpting, and this is a, this is another little metaphor that came up for us. I think in in the process of discussing it, it's worth sharing. Now is the say you're 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 creating a a piece of art that the block of stone out of which you fashion the object you know say you're making a uh, so you're sculpting something right well that's that stone's going to have a say about the way the thing shows up it's not just an individual kind of almost um like egoically and narcissistically making the world the way they want it to be it's about the interaction between the artist and their um and their medium or and their whatever the constraints are on that that process you know so in the case of a sculptor it's like well what's the stone made of like what's the materials what what tools are you using like what what's so there's all of this stuff about acceptance rather than imposition. I think that's beautifully put. Um, I just also was reminded of the term to witness, to witness mm. something which, which I think you just said, and this mm. sort of like witnessing, witnessing emergence, right? So there's a lot of talk about emergence and complexity and I don't know what, so there, I, so a lot of people talk mm. about that, but I don't see any of that being done, actually. Like, I don't see anybody actually being able to work with emergence or point towards it or to allow it to become fruitful, just to, to keep, again, that image of the tree, right? To, to say, mm. okay, we know this thing of emergence is important. It's being, being studied also in social science and all that. And it, it, it seems to be a thing, but what what appears to be lacking is anybody who can tell us, okay, what do we do with that thing? And what what I sense is that we were witnessing this emergent process that we were in it, and as you said, not imposing uh, something onto it, but rather witnessing it and and helping it along and and getting out of its way to be there and. Uh, mm. And, yeah. and, and really enjoying being part of that. And so that's, you know, sometimes I said, well, isn't that wonderful that we sort of like cracked that code also in terms of complexity and emergence. First of all, the metaphorical world seems to be able to deal with complexity in a great way. It seems to be an adequate um, space to reflect upon it and, and, and second of all, to experience and actually it live what emergence is. We talk about it, but what mm -hmm. is it actually? Now we talk about it more. Well, I don't experience any emergence. All I experience is somebody talking about it. It's not, 
It's not like us right now, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like us right like now, us, exactly. Us now trying we're, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now we're lecturing everybody on that. So, <laughs> um, and we'll have to, you know, give a live demonstration one day on what we're talking about. But they, it, the, yeah, nobody will know until they do the thing though, right? Like yeah. that's, because even if they watch us, there's still us projecting on this. Like anybody listening, like try it. <laughs> you yeah, you have, to, you have to do the thing. Do to, the thing to, to, to get it. To get it. And it's the same with yeah. the artistic process. You can enjoy the artifact, but you don't know what the artistic process is unless you do it. And you will experience a, a vast difference of, of those two people, those th things, you know, people talking about art, looking at it and doing it are vastly different things, vastly different yeah. and in terms of the experience, also vastly different. And I think that's it's completely underestimated, completely underestimated. I just want to, because we sort of like set ourselves this topic, I just want to throw it in there in, 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 is this topic of liminal space mm. um, because I've been struggling with that and I was thinking about talking about it, but I don't even know how to talk about that properly. Um, we came up with the term liminal farm. So we said, okay, that's the, that's what we had or what we experienced together, although went beyond the farm. And then we came up mm. with the term liminal space as the space in which these things manifest themselves. And I wonder what your, how you would describe it. Like I have, I have some ideas and yeah, I already put a definition out there. I would say that's the space where, where the where the stuff is happening is in liminal space. But what is liminal space? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. What is liminal space? Well, I don't know. They'll, they'll, I'm sure there'll be somebody that's got a definition that totally contradicts mine. Uh, but I, so I, I suppose I will preface this with the liminal space as the way I'm about to describe it is is embedded within the work that we've been doing together so it's the the words might not mean the same things they might not even be dictionary dictionary definitions of of you know they might not be correct but just so that you can uh, anyone listening can get a can get a, a handle on the way that we use the term I can describe my experience of that which is um so that well the, there's a kind of in between, right? Um, which is this somewhere in between the subconscious and the conscious. Um, perhaps it's a dialogue between the subconscious and the conscious. Um, there's it, it, there's also kind of dialogue between the unknown and the known you know it's like at what point does when does i suppose in art when when does the object cease being the primary constituents like parts right materials and when does it become the piece of art right there's that in between place. Um, there was a lot of, there was a metaphor that we that we used quite a lot as we were working around the depths and the land. And there's this notion of amphibiousness. Um, and the, like a, a kind of, with a general sense of, you know, like maybe the sea or deep water, or there's something about that as being representative of the, the unknown, uh, the unconscious. Um, and then the land as being something quite solid. Um, And that, but again, this is another one of those situations. I can't remember which way round that was. I can't remember whether the, did we come up with the idea of a, like an, did, were we kind of mulling up around amphibiousness before we got to the idea of a water and land? 
were we uh, to what degree did we consciously decide oh the liminal space is the place between so somebody somebody i don't know walking along the edge of the beach with their socks off as being somehow in the liminal place or being able to dive into the water and swim back out swim up and out and find their way back to land is that that's like a kind of lim a metaphor for the the liminal the liminal that we were talking about and some of these themes came up so there was quite a lot of water hanging around like in terms of the do you know what i mean like what and often we were by the sea right um and uh, you know there were like sort of amphibious creatures salamanders and there's something around that that was captured in the whole the whole thing um yeah that's some stuff i i don't know to what degree anyone listening to that go oh okay yeah that's what it is probably not but i, I you know. think you already you already had it said it beautifully in terms of um the space between the conscious and the unconscious and especially the second part of what you said the space between the known and the unknown right mm. and i think yeah you could say well that's that's it there's no you know we don't need to talk about it much more that's that's a good that's the best definition one could give yeah and because the last time we also said well it all starts by not knowing right you have to put yourself first into the position of not knowing to enter liminal space yes. and yeah while the I, I when thinking about it, it seems like a harsh prerequisite it's just a way how our mind seems to function also through speech and through rationalization and dialogue as we do now that we seem to spend most of our time in the known using our faculty faculties to control the situation or influence in some way right we have to then consciously sort of like scale that back and say and reduce that and say okay let let something else come up which comes up from the unknown or from the unconscious in that case, so we can you can sort of enter liminality in the first place. Like you have to like be aware of that. That this is like we talked about that last. Time. This is more always happening in the background, but to observe it consciously, you have to scale back all that other stuff. And um, and so that the space between the known and the unknown, I like that a lot. Um, I I wonder if uh, I mean that might put people off but i wonder if if if, if other uh, other liminal states are related to that for example you know there's a lot of talk about trance states like where mm. people you know through dancing or doing going into a club um enter into the into something which you could call liminality or when you sit in a cinema for two hours and you watch a movie if that is if that is similar it's not identical obviously but there are there seems to be there seems to be other areas where people seek out that space without maybe consciously seeking it out, but they have a certain desire to be in that space, not to not to be consciously aware and not to be completely unconscious, but somewhere in between. Um, mm. And yeah, listening to music, you know, maybe listening to music and walking down the street could be something like that. Where you where you're in that in between state, although the music is is putting you there, it's like maybe art sometimes has that effect of putting you into that trance state, into that liminal state. It's like it's like the 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 motivating factor to basically hypnotize you <laughs> into, into that right. state of mind, right? You just yeah. plug in your earphones and you go like, oh, okay, I'm I'm out of here, like I'm somewhere different now, or you know, open up Netflix and I watch a cool series now I'm, I'm gone i'm in the liminal space but i need an artifact i need something to basically put me there and we didn't use that we didn't use music to put us there we we, we did it by ourselves without any or even when people take drugs you could argue it's also just to 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 use those to put themselves into those liminal states of mind yeah Although they're always uh, different, so I'm a little bit hesitant. They seem to be related to what we've experienced, but they're, it's not actually the same thing. Like yes, yeah, yeah. What, what would there's be something the, about yeah. category for, coming up for me, right? So there's something like so when you know something, it's like you you can label it, right? 
e either with a symbol or a word or a name or a you know a value or like it can it can sit inside in a neat there's a sense of it being something that is distinct and separate from everything else that's going on and so i think say something like a film right you you're living your own life okay and you know you've got your own little stories going on and then you what happens with the film is that you then become you become identified with a character um or a set of characters and there's a whole world that you enter and uh and then if it's a good film you're lost in it and you, you don't want to check your own phone and there's a there is a sense of motioning there's a motion from uh the work your life as it was into this other other thing and then at the end of the film you get that kind of strange sort of oh well like back back to reality thing if it's a good film that you know um a really captivating one and then so so there's that the other thing that was coming up for me was meditation and again i think that again that's a, that's about category shifting mm. Okay, often with often with meditation is like we, like we're caught up in our like oh this is that thing and this is that thing and that's that thing and that's that thing and then depending on what's going on for you in meditation you might you, you're shifting your attention away from from that the 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 categories you're shifting attention away from living within them to maybe somehow stepping outside of them and looking at them and so that the, again there's some like a boundary breach or it's the 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 spot between spots somehow you know and then then you, you you pop out and you look at that one and you look at that one you look at that thing you know and it, of course depends on your journey through meditation but then there's a point that you notice the noticer right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's and then it's a kind of again it's that stepping out and stepping out and stepping out um and yeah, music and art, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a little, it's a engaging in art, like as, as you know, here I'll talk about it as a, like an experiencer rather than a creator of art um again if it's good it's captivating and it's captivating because it's you f you forget yourself for a moment right like you're the you move out of your known into something else and you maybe even forget yourself um that feels linked somehow and i can't quite pin it pin it down exactly the ways in which it is but hopefully it's enough to for anyone listening to at but least be intrigued i think i think the the, the, the the comparison to meditation is really good because there seems to be in meditation this really this phase where you are able to see your subconscious at work and how powerful it is and, and what sort of imagery it starts to produce in that moment and how captivating it is also in terms of its expressiveness. And that seems to be a similar area, uh, or the, I would say the most, in terms of, if you would say likeness and phenomena, the more it is, it's, that's the most, it has the most likeness than liminal space or what we're trying to describe. It's, but the difference there, what, what, what we did was we still had some um, interactive agency, right? There was not just this, okay, I'm just going to observe, I'm just going to let the, I don't know, the clouds pass, which can also happen, but I can sort of interact it, shape it, let it speak, uh, interact also with other people, which is really important, like in meditation, while you're just sitting by yourself and, you know, watching your subconscious do its thing and mm. overpowering you or not. Uh, where there here was there this interactiveness which you could um, to varying degrees according and later on we said okay let's not let's see what emerges by itself and not so much put it towards certain intent you can also do that but uh, what is unique yeah it's sort of like you can still interact with each other in that liminal space as a group 
and have something like joint space, which you can't mm. have in meditation for obvious reasons. And yes. in, in, in art and music, it's like you're just giving up your agency. I sometimes compare, because people do work with music and drums and all that. I say, I think art, I, I would consider art, many forms of art, like very potent pharmaceutical interventions by now. Like there are, <laughs> yeah. where yeah. you don't really know what the pharmacist has put into the potion, right? You don't, you don't really understand how the music was composed. You don't really understand how the film was made. And it sort of like captivates you completely and puts you into that state, but you have very little agency. Like you don't, except for maybe the imagery which you're producing or the emotions, like it just, it runs you through a predefined script, also music, like it's just, goes through its script and so does the movie and you follow along according to how you feel captivated by it but it's not the same thing in terms of what we well we still had room to maneuver right so we could observe we could have some sort of influence on it although we allowed it also to emerge but there was more I would say if I would make a recommendation I try this instead of watching a movie like you have your yes. own movie then like you have your own you have your own thing which is being created which is so much more insightful also in cathartic in, in terms of cathartic cathartic moments which you just self-create right uh, yeah. you don't need anybody to create them for you or or put you through the process um you you would you develop the process yeah yeah uh and i think that's great do this instead of watching a movie <laughs> yeah. but, no, but what, one thing, like I, I enjoy watching a film, right? And but one of the things that really frustrates me, like, and you can go to the movies by yourself, or, or with, sorry, or you can go to the movies with other people, right? But when when you go to the movies with other people, you're not really doing anything with them, right? Like you're sat next to them, you know, and you're both partaking in this event and then you you know maybe, maybe afterwards you'll have opinions and you can talk about your opinions but you don't get that same uh you don't like you say you don't get any agency over it you don't get to control it and you certainly don't get to really interact with the person that sat next to you in any deeper meaningful way it's not really a shared experience um and this is of course is one is one of the problems with Art and well, certainly the way that we seem to do art a lot in the West right now, right? Which is that a group of artists or an individual artist creates a thing and then kind of projects it at people. And then they, you know, they'll have an internal dialogue um, and they might provide a bit of feedback, but it's a one way thing. There isn't much interaction um in a way that's as meaningful to the creator of the art as it perhaps is for the um the receiver or the uh, uh the, i want to say customer right mm. but maybe that's maybe that's a piece of what's what's going on but, but the receiver right um the person receiving the art there's something about co-creation which gives the thing more life somehow, at least for me, mm. you know. Um, that's part of the reason why I, I think why I really like doing it. Yeah, I, I, it, be, it beats watching a movie, definitely. Beats, beats going to the cinema with someone else to watch a movie, you know. Like if you're feeling passive and you want to go by yourself and just like, great, but yeah, otherwise, if you want to actually do a thing with another person, this will be better. I agree with that. There is this, because you mentioned this amphibious quality, I think that sort of came up in, in some sort of symbolic representation of what Heather so, saw herself as um, in this. And I, I just because you mentioned it, now I start to understand why, because you said it actually now why now I understand more why she saw herself as this amphibious creature or that she had this amphibious creature within her and that was so important all the time now it sort of like makes perfect sense to me I never actually <laughs> quite understood that but now the blob, the blob salamander the blob thing. salamander and I think one of the the background of that was uh, maybe that's a that's a high bar to 
take was to, okay, how, how do we take that more into our lives? Like that, it's, it's probably, like there's always this dilemma of alleviation of suffering, right? So you could say, okay, the artists are doing, have an important social function, basically. They are bringing people back to that space so they can actually regenerate, reconnect to themselves, have, have a meaningful experience. I mean, art is meaningful, doesn't, you know, also music. Mm. And then, okay, and, or they go to a dance event and they dance all weekend and they rediscover themselves and say, oh, this is who I really am. And now I can go back to my shit job. So, yeah. so that seems to happen a lot. So people do mm. have, you know, um, emotional and spiritual experiences through art. And then right. they go back to their, you know, life. And so they compartmentalize that part away from them. And I think somewhere along the lines, we discussed that and said, well, that's, how do we get away from that in general, because what we call meta art or the liminal space could be another service provision, right? You say, okay, you feel bad, do some, you know, liminal space, it's better than watching movie. And then people would do it and feel better and they would go back to their shit job and mm. they feel bad, they go back to liminal space. And I think the amphibious creature was that, represented that person who was able to do everything at the same time so that this person wouldn't have to go back and forth between those worlds, but would combine the land and the sea at all times and would not need that healing process, that regeneration process that, oh, now I know who I am and then go back and now I forget who I am. Like mm -hmm. would constantly remember who they are and incorporate that, that liminal, liminality all the time. So I think that was symbolic for that, let's say ambition or wish or, and I, th I don't know if any of us got there. <laughs> I, I don't know if I, I, I'm trying to get there. I'm still trying to get there. I would like to have more of that in my life. Um, mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, loads of, loads of stuff like ancillary stuff's coming up. I mean, I, you know, with there's Marx and his alienated labor and then there's, there's Jung's notion of the persona um, and how that can get in the way of um, uh, how that can get in the way of our, of our, our contact with our, uh, like more, our true selves. And that, that word remembering, remembering, right? Like reattaching our um, spiritual uh, and deep selves with with the person wandering around the office, right? Like, and yeah, something again, something about authenticity, which modern life can kind of, can kind of strip away a bit, can't it? Um, yeah, and I remember last time I was talking about how I'd quite, I'd quite like to be able to do this kind of thing at work, right? And I think this is part of it. Um, and it, and it would ne it would necessitate you know to get it working properly it would necessitate um, workplaces right institutions um, managers bosses uh, and everyone it would uh, what would be necessary is that 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 way more bits of us are taken into consideration whilst we're at work that that we're not dismembered. In a way that we sometimes find ourselves. Um, I don't know if this is a good segue into institutions, right? Because you raised that earlier, like before mm. we before we started recording, or is that a totally different conversation? You think? Not entirely. I mean, the right. the, the the question of you know becoming whole and staying whole uh, mm. seems to be a challenge, and I think many people yeah. who work in this area seems to seem to struggle with it right so it doesn't matter if they're in therapy coaching organizational development all that is mm. that there seem to be like forces tearing at us all the time and we would also talked about that and said well is that really true is that not just something which we might have experienced but then we could also have a different kind of experience with institutions and working with people is that 
does it always is is the world so small that it only has that type of experience i don't know i can't answer, <laughs> i can't answer yeah. that but that's but i know it's a it's a dilemma for for many people who who say i know that there is a certain wholeness i've experienced it i've been i've i have remembered i have become whole but i don't seem to be able to retain it when i go back and do my thing but I don't know if that's universal. It could be also that there are plenty of people out there who say, no, I, I'm fine. I'm, I always feel actually whole and that I'm there as, as an emotional, spiritual being and doing what I'm doing is part of that and I'm, I'm fine. So that could also be the case. Yeah. So, well, look, if you find yeah. them, then like, let's see if we can let's bring them here. Those people. <laughs> what are you doing? How, 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 how can you make this? I'm sure there are, I'm sure. And there's probably a bandwidth, right? There are some people who are, like probably quite close to being able to do that and other people who are like des you know absolutely 100 percent alienated and just live you know uh, terribly disconnected lives i, I um, just want i just wanted to raise but, because you, you just also mentioned mentioned jung and um just wanted to make a segue into that and we said okay because we, we were talking about liminal space and also other spaces which are somehow related to liminal space mm. and you brought up Jung and I wanted also to bring up again the dream space and um, because again maybe it's a question to you just curious to hear your opinion do you think the dream mm. space is liminal space or is it again something slightly different I would argue it's slightly different but I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinion yeah yeah this. I, I I agree it is diff I agree it's slightly different. There is something liminal about it though, right? In, in the sense that you uh obviously there's a bunch of stuff that can go on in a dream that that doesn't happen in real life, right? So that's a characteristic it kind of shares. There's also a sense of you being handed the thing for most for lots of people. I know some people can dream in a lucid way. Mm. Um, but those that don't dream in a lucid way, um there's an experience of of being in it that's like you just you go through the thing so there's that you have to accept it um uh there's so uh, yeah it's it's similar but different um yeah i, I suppose that's what i'd say I just noticed that it might, I, I, the one thing I, the other thing I wanted to say is that some of the kinds of things that you might go on in dream analysis, you, it, it might be, might be fun to, tr to try applying those things to what, what happens in a, in a liminal space session, like that thing of looking back over what's just gone on and going, well, what does that mean? Mm, right? how, mm. And, and how, how can I, what, whatever fruits, were born in that session how do i make sure that i i i can eat i can eat them and ingest them and then and, and be energized by them or, or, or take them out into into my life um that feels like a a thing worth worth trying and it, it was we did a bit of that as well right like the, they were kind of not exactly the same necessarily but they were similar ways of looking at what happened um, that, you, that you might find in in dream analysis well i just noticed that if i remember back to the beginning when we started that um i think heather was the first to talk about her dreams she said oh i dreamt about you guys like uh and i yeah. sort of got excited and she wrote down the dream and i think we have it still somewhere where the whole group was in the dream in a certain way Mm. And um, I just noticed that also in my coaching practice, in two cases now where I started with liminal space, the clients would offer suddenly their dreams without me asking even for it. It wasn't like, okay, but if you dream of something, you know, we should also look at it. It wasn't like that. It was just, okay, it's a coaching process. Let's look at it through this liminal space, using metaphorical thinking, symbolic thinking. And in the next two sessions, they would come up, oh, by the way, I had a dream I want to talk about. So there seems to be something, I would argue, as if the subconscious is invited to partake and to participate and starts to want to express itself. And if you're, like, if you're available for that, then it starts to become active in a sense that it says, oh, there's something happening here. I want to talk. Like, <laughs> I have something to say. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm yeah. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and uh, yeah, it seems to trigger that in some in a, in a good way. I I would argue that um, gives 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 it more even more dynamic in a way that okay now I can make sort of the connections towards the dream state which is sort of different but related to this and there's the liminal space and then there's the conscious space where I do my stuff so all that there seems to be like the clients seem to notice there's a connection between all of those states of mind which mm. help them I'm to yeah, and basically understand themselves better and make that make that connection. Like they 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 make that connection actually by themselves by offering up the dreams and then saying, "Hang on, <laughs> what? All of this is connected. Like there's yeah there's a direct through way, and um, it helps them to to uh, as far as I know to, to to become oriented and more satisfied also somehow that they they understand how. What, what's going on? What is going on? Mm. So they just observe that and say, oh, now I understand better what's going on. Yeah. Um, because it's weird how we sometimes have in the waking state certain, I don't know, desires or ideas or f even fantasies. And if you look at the liminal space and the dream state, it's it's weird how different they are then. And you go like, well, where where is all that? Where did, <laughs> where did all that go? Like, there seems to be other forces at work which need attention and want to be expressed and which are just just as satisfying as maybe a neurotic fantasy. That's, and that then that seems to balance itself out better than suddenly, like, instead of the neurosis, which sort of like suggests, oh, I, I need to do that, then I will be happy, that those other spaces seem to have a different suggestibility or they give you a different different direction in terms of well if you would listen to me a little bit more you could also be happy <laughs> you know, like yeah you, also, you also could have a good life um, i wonder if i wonder if we've got an example of that is there anything you can remember of a, like a well um, something happening in one of the things that we did that where that felt well i can i can give an example um from a client and um so the situation was that uh, she was, I noticed she was dissatisfied with, uh, she was, there was a strong emotional reaction towards other people presenting their work, right? So she didn't like that. And she herself was also struggling with that of, you know, how do I present my work? That was actually this topic of the whole mm. client. How do I present my work? So, um, now you could go approach this in a way like, oh, this seems to be your problem and what's, you know, all that. But instead of that, you could enter the liminal space in terms of, okay, let, let, so look at this feeling and give it a, what image arises when you feel that feeling and you look at it symbolically through that image, right? So mm -hmm. that's one thing. And on the other hand, uh, she would then come back one day and even offer a dream, which had exactly the same theme in terms of, somebody being very dissatisfied with her like somebody she was trying to, to present her work and there was this other woman who was very angry at her so so th what i'm trying to say is the themes seem to present themselves and i think that's what we also found out when we looked at dreams we saw it and and the liminal space that there were certain themes there were certain like in, in art like in music it's not a message it's not a there's not a recipe. It's that there's no. It's not. It's not utilitarian. It's more thematic. It's something which flows through you as as a as a life theme, and you can look at it and 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 realize that this theme is part of you, and and just by looking at it, it it can be transformed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I guess that's, and I. Yeah, and this transformative aspect, maybe we'll come to that, that we said, okay, even within, it, there seems to be some malleability within the liminal space where you can start interacting with the, with the material to transform it in some way. So we also did that. And uh, I also did that with the client and was, that was what I mean, like moments of delight, like discovering this image, which I have of that feeling, of that negative feeling, I can interact with it. I can transform it. I can change it. And so you had all that delight bubbling up, like it's not fixed, it's not. So, and that was, that's the transformative part. We had that also in the group, this aspect of, I can, I can influence, it, it can change. It can be something quite different. Yep. And yeah. um, 
the sense of yeah. freedom that I'm free of this 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 moment or this this imagery which it's not set in stone it's it's it I, I can influence it in some way I can transform it yeah yeah I'm now I'm remembering my in one of the sessions I was feeling kind of like I can't remember that I I I I brought there was something There was something kind of. I was feeling sort of stressed about the, the amount of different things that needed to happen in my life, mm. I think. And so I thought, oh, hey, well, let's have a play with that, right? And uh, I, I, hopefully you can remember this this one, but I don't know if you remember the, like there was kind of loads of different. What and what came to mind was like this kind of strange object, which had was like, loads of different um like arms attached to it all balancing and then there was mm -hmm. a sense of a kind of like a spinning motion and anytime one of the things got hit or was was pushed by the wind it it kind of shifted up and down and round and kind of just took the force and i remember doing that and feeling a lot better there was something about being able to stand back and, and look at that image and going and, 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 and be and be kind of like, ah, so these are all the different things. And there's this sense of something knocking into them and preventing them from happening. But if you if you set the if you set the the, the weighting up right on each of the things, then the whole thing will flow smoothly. And the other piece of that as well is that that I think happened for me It's part of why, why I ended up feeling better about it all was looking at one's own life like it's a kind of sculpture like that, mm -hmm. right? All the different parts and it all feels chaotic. When, when you're one of the bits or you're trapped in between one of the bits, it feels all like you're all caught up and twisted in a moment, right? But if you can step back and look at it all and go, oh, wow, no, this is your life like just unfolding. Mm -hmm. And one thing is going to bump into another thing and it's going to affect the trajectory and it isn't going to go the way you necessarily intended, but that doesn't mean it's not just as beautiful or just as needing to be the way it needs to be. And I think there was, and I don't think I'd have got to that more accepting place about the, the, the kind of, the stressfulness of life without having had that little experience so um yeah so there's another there's another example i guess of, of a uh of engaging in the process and then being able to somehow see it from a different angle and then feel differently it's like nothing had changed like i hadn't in in the sense that i hadn't hadn't fixed all of the problems you know like i hadn't I hadn't solved the problem or resolved the issue. I'd reframed it. Right. I'd seen it in a new light. Right. And I and I felt okay about it. Yeah, and it, and it happened you know? sort of like almost by itself. Like there wasn't somebody telling you, "Oh, you got to be like that." Right. At no what, point did anyone. Yeah, yeah. There was no directing from anyone. Yeah, none just, of you like it was just oh what's that oh what's that what's that look like how does it feel to be in there can that say anything you know and all these kind of questions and then it's just and you feel in and you go oh and then you know for me personally most of the time the things would could speak and could say things sometimes not but there's also that little 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 testing and checking oh if that bit was allowed to say a thing what would it say or if and then you, you yes it's like it's like you, you build up a picture of the, of the problem that's not linear you know like a tick box like a list i i just wanted to go back to what you said about the internal representation of a certain feeling or question and that this internal representation of that whatever it might be, I would agree, it has, has a certain sense of wholeness to it. Like you feel this is an adequate representation of my situation, of me, 
there's nothing missing from it. It's not, we're not extracting a piece of you and this is then representational of you, but that is actually me or that is my situation. And I've seen that also happen within, with, within clients. I just, maybe I'll just go a little bit again into the example of this woman who was, felt these strong feelings of dissatisfaction and the, she produced mm -hmm. an image of her, herself as a child sitting at the dinner table with her father. So that was the representation. And I asked her, is this a memory or is this iconic? Because that was important for me. And I think you also have to, we also have to make the difference between memories and liminal space. Liminal mm -hmm. space is not memories. It's, it's a different, it's <laughs> again, it's, all these differences, but it's important to note that also when people produce memories that they're in a different space than liminal space. And then she says, no, I said, is it more like an iconograph, like an, an icon of this situation at the dinner table. She says, yes, it's more symbolic. It's not an actual evening. It's not a specific date. I said, yes. okay, let's, let's proceed then with this image because it's, 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 it's all, all of it's, I don't know, hundreds of dinner tables, right? All in one image. And, yep. and she went into that and it was about the, the, the father talking a lot and her being angry at her father. And uh, so I'm dissatisfied because he would never listen to any of his children. And because it was not a specific memory, we proceeded. And then I said, well, um, how about interacting with that icon and changing it? And she did. Like, it was just, as you said, told, like she was able to interact with it. She was able to, to change it. She, and she was just laughing. I was laughing. Like she, the father was suddenly listening to his children. They were telling these amazing stories, what they had experienced. And she was very happy. Mm. And... Um, I guess it was, yeah, it had a similar effect in terms of um, I can interact with this. And I didn't tell her now, okay, change this into a happy image or let's, you know, do, you know you can, but just can, yes. you, can you interact with it? Can you, can you change this image in any way? And uh, she, and it went really rapidly. And one has to add, this is not always the case. Some people are not able to change the images. They're not, they're sort of like yeah. stuck with that. And so they've, they're, they're very, apparently maybe there's also s some images which are immovable but mm. she was and she had that sensation of surprise and delight and uh yeah i can i can i can step back as you say and maybe p find more peace or content or harmony or whatever that is than what happens in that moment you're not you don't or what I also felt when experiencing that, you don't feel trapped by that anymore. By the, you don't feel so entrapped by these psychological workings. Right. Um, it's not a dead end. You realize this is not how it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking a little bit at the time and I'm wondering how do we close this session today? <laughs> how do we get out of it? How do we, how do we wrap it up? I mean, we try to like mm. explain what liminal space is and then maybe just to remember a little bit and we, we went into all sorts of things, what it's not. And as you pointed <laughs> out, that's what's usually done. It's not that, it's not this, it's not that. You sort of delineate your thing from other things. Yeah, and we try to explain a little bit what it is and what it what it can become. And at the end, we sort of ended up well, it can become a space also for 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 transformation, for for self remembering, putting oneself together, becoming whole again. Yeah, and I just want to go back to something, maybe maybe to close it off, because I think last time you said also, and I, I share that sentiment is that. I think you were sort of dissatisfied about talking about it as it is, as if it were a process or a thing, and I I, I always wonder how 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 do we get out of that? How do we get out of this seeing it as a thing or another fad or process or whatever? We're trying to so I don't know I don't have I don't I don't have an answer to that. Yeah. Yeah, because again, it's like it's that category problem, isn't it? Is, is as soon as somebody takes it and then can put borders around the outside of it and explain it, then then that also means they can shuffle it around and it can then be be kind of, I suppose, metaphorically 
placed on a on a shelf and forgotten about, right? Or or only only brought out at weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, how can we do it? The the question is 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 to to try and do it, isn't it? I think I, th- I think that's the answer. Is is to try and is to try and do it. Um, try to move through life whilst holding this kind of um, this openness to the unfolding, and also maybe checking in on oneself as well from time to time, right? Like, what's rather than just going through the day, also just checking in with this liminal space this is there a sim you know if you feel a thing is there a symbol that can be associated with that and just trying to do it i mean i i feel like there's a wider there's a cultural and systemic stuff you know that's uh you know if you go to work and you can experience this stuff for yourself but aren't really ever allowed to speak about it because people just well it is kind of weird isn't it but that's the that's the mm. thing people get all freaked out by it or don't want to engage they just want to do their job you know and they want to cut themselves off from from this stuff and it's, it, 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 that can be tough because then you're getting feedback not to do this and just kind of go through the motions you know um yeah well that's a it's actually a big question mm. do you have any answers to it what do you well, think? I think you already gave an answer right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think, that's. A, I think that's a good. I, I think that's a good good way of of um, of talking about it. Mm. Yeah. All right. We well, had to, yeah. Sorry. So, so I, I was just going to say because yeah. we had this notion of the poetic world that came mm-hmm. up, didn't we? Which I feel feel is attached to this. So maybe that's the thing we look at next time. Right. Right. Okay, we'll do that then. We'll 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 do that next time. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, yeah, take care and, and talk to you next time. Okay. Okay. See you then. Bye bye. Bye bye.